So yeah, welcome everybody to Ana Paula Fragoso's session on slow marketing. We did a little brainstorm of cover songs and I was relating how, um, what it must be like for an artist to see an incredibly talented musician um, take their original song and kind of put their own touch on it. And that's the situation I'm in right now because years ago, um, Ana Paula Fragoso came to Edmonton to do a uh, weekend marketing workshop and she expressed her admiration for my work, which I understood because I've expressed my admiration to the people who, you know, I learned from myself. So it wasn't, it's a, it's a mutual understanding, you know, we're all grateful for what we've received. And so I, uh, we went for lunch at this little uh, pho restaurant called the Phobulus. And she expressed that she had this love of slow marketing, saw the need for it in Brazil, still stuck in the 1980s as it is in their marketing and sales. And would I give some kind of blessing on her doing the work? And, you know, it was the easiest yes I've ever given in my life. And so she's been, uh, you know, in part influenced by my work and then has brought her own brilliance to bear in, in uh, that's probably most of it in uh, talking about slow marketing uh, in a whole other country, in a whole other language in Portuguese. So, so first of all, that's just my delight to be sitting here in the chair I'm sitting in. And also my immense gratitude, given that she's doing a presentation in a language that is not her first, maybe, or second or third language. Um, and so that's just incredibly generous to extend yourself in this way and to translate not only the language um, but this whole uh, thorny business of slow marketing to us here today. So, Anna Paula, so glad to have you. I'll just be sitting and applauding the whole time. And uh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. I'm extremely honored and a little bit nervous to be here today. So, well, but yet I have a, another computer here in backup in case something happens and I have to jump in another computer. So I have all settled to everything to go just fine. I wanted to first thank Ted, of course, for giving me this little space to talk about it. And I come here in a very, very humble position, like I'm doing a little bit of my stuff here. So Ted, I'm using a lot of your stuff, but I'm putting my stuff on it. So, okay. If you have any doubts of what I'm saying because of lack of my words, you can ask your questions and we'll get to it. And uh, well, I am a very visual person. So I made a presentation for us to, to present here. If you, if you would like, Ted, please let me share. I don't know if it's, where do I share the screen? Yeah, you have to let me, okay. So yeah, uh, let me just check if everything's in place before, okay. Okay, share my screen. So, well, this is um, my screen. First of all, I do my presentations on Canva. So, well, they are beautiful. So I'm a very visual person. I do things beautiful. I like it. So, okay, guys, I'll just, um, this is the slow marketing. Like, you know that uh, Ted wrote about it. I don't know if any of you had the chance to read his blog post about it before. Um, Ted's work has been all that I've been using, not everything, but a lot of the basics of my work comes from what he's doing over there. That's why I'm also on the membership, always learning new things. So I'll just, um, today we'll talk, I'll talk a little bit about what is slow marketing actually for me and given all the situation we have here in Brazil also, and things that I know that we struggle with also in marketing specifically, why does it matter and how we can actually get the results that we want? Because every time we, I present to people with low marketing, they're like, oh my God, but slow, what do you mean? Ah, I don't, I don't want to do things slowly. I, I need, I need um, uh, 
results right now and I have to explain all the process of doing this marketing and how it's possible to get the results. So I'll try to be very specific and very short here so we can discuss about it. I want to be a, like a conversation too. Okay, Ted, so you can help me. I move my hands a lot and that's okay. Okay, but before that, I want to welcome all to this presentation. Aymana, I would like to be addressed she, her. I'm a Brazilian living in Sao Paulo. Sao Paulo is the most populated city of Brazil. So just some info for you. Like we have 12.3 million people living in the city. So it's a lot of people. And a lot of um, commercial things, a lot of money passing through the city. So Sao Paulo is one of the most, is the richest city of my country. So here we have people doing everything everywhere all the time. Everything is 24 hours open. And when I went to Edmonton, I was like, how is it possible that people close the stores? <laughs> we have everything 24 hours, very, very like New York and very like that. So I'm a mother of two. My kids are small kids. My daughter is nine and my son is six years old, turning seven in a few weeks. And my work has been for the last four years, is low business and marketing coach. I'm adding the business thing because I started to see how marketing was not just about marketing. It's much more than that. I mean, it's the result. So we'll talk about that. And today I'm here just to show you guys my point of view of what I've learned from Ted and from my, um, uh, how can I say, from my experience here with, with Brazilians and with my clients and everything. Well, I, just a little bit about me, I left the corporate world to be with my kids. So this was a very huge uh, step for me. I have been working on a corporate world for, for a lot of years and I decided to to leave. So I just, I started my, my business as a web designer. I studied web design and started to sell web design. And I started to do the marketing for selling those websites. And I was like, oh, I want to do everything they, it's possible to do about marketing. And I'm like, not getting any clients. And that was my first frustration, main frustration uh, about the marketing that is um, presented here in Brazil. We are very fond, Brazilians are very fond of the marketing formulas, like uh, one week videos to sell in the last video and a 12 email marketing emails. So banging people in their, in their inbox to, to buy. So this is very common here in Brazil. And when I started, I thought that was the only way. And then I thought I have to do that. And I started doing it like crazy and I didn't get results. And the thought that occurred to me at the time was, what if I don't want to do all that? I don't want to, it's like, it's, it's, it's stressful, it's boring, it's blah. And I couldn't find answers here in Brazil. So I started to search abroad and I was also having a change of mindset in my own life, in my own personal life, but being with my kids and all shifted very all together. And then one day I bumped into Ted's work and I remember crying when I read his blog post and I'm like, oh my God, this is it. Oh my God, I can't believe it. It was a, like a huge relief like it's like oh thank god I don't have to do that anymore I don't know what I have to do but he was like giving me permission for not doing it doing that anymore so that's where I started like I bought all his ebooks I printed them all I have all of them read and highlighted and written and made all of things and then my work started to build from there and um, I've been doing that since then, of course, evolving through time. This is what we're, talk we're going to be talking about a lot here from this, this, evolving, this evolution of our work. So yeah, 
Okay, this is a little bit about me, all right? Okay, so what is slow marketing? Yeah, someone asked in the chat, I put, oh, do you like to, get some, to, to ask something? And someone like, oh, I would like to know what is slow marketing? Well, slow marketing is, well, according to Ted, it's like understanding it takes time to build a business. It's having peace with it. Like it, this takes time. And this is so important to, to know and to sink in because it really does take time. And uh, to build a business that is going to support you your whole life. So Brazilians don't get that. And that's my effort here every day, punching this bag, like you have to be patient. It doesn't mean you don't do stuff. It doesn't mean not doing stuff. It means just do what you have to do consistently and you get results, uh, but it's not going to be a 30 day thing. It's not going to be a 60 day thing. It's going to be a much more time. And well, this is what um, it's for me. It's about giving ourselves um, time to grow and be strong, really. And this is what it is. But it also has the support of a few concepts that I would like to share here with you because it's, uh, it's my point of view, but it's coming from somewhere else. And it's important that you know that there is a slow movement. Um, here in a book from Carlo Nore, we have this quote that being slow means that you control the rhythms of your own life. Uh, you decide how fast and how slow, how fast you have to go in any given context. And if today if you want to go fast, you go fast. If tomorrow you want to go slow, you go slow. What we are fighting for is the right to determine our own tempos. We live in a fast approach. Um, how can I say? Um, I forgot the word. Doesn't matter. I would, I would take Society? Huh? Society, yeah. D dictatorship, <laughs> more or less. <laughs> Yeah. It's like if you're not going fast, you are a loser. It's like that. And it it goes from where when you were a kid to for the rest of your life. So this is like really for me, it is a fight because I have to also I have to be like that and to to be an example for my kids. So for me, the slow in my life is a way of living, first of all. I am not a slow person. I am not, oh, everything is wonderful and life is, I'm not like that. I am a fast paced person, but I use slow to remind me that I can be slow. I don't have to be always running and doing and doing things and inventing stuff and, and everything all, all the time because this is, has been all my life. This is what I've been taught to do and I have to change that. So this is the first thing about slow marketing that I want you to see when we, uh, when we apply this to marketing. It's a moment, there's a dog here. When we apply this to marketing, it means there is a time when you really have to do a lot of things in your marketing to sell more, when you have a date to sell it, when you have a deadline and everything, but it's not all the time. It's not like you have to be doing everything all the time. So this is the main, uh, this is the core thing about slow marketing. And the other thing I wanna share with you is those principles that I use, that I, I got from Carolyn State Conscious Marketing book very good book that I recommend you all reading. Um, it's like, what, what, what it means is low marketing? What does it mean? Like it's what I, what is behind it? How, how do I know that I am applying is low marketing in my business? Um, this is what I've been asked a lot. People ask me, how do I know when I'm not using that? How do I use that? And I mean, like you have those principles that I follow in my work and I present them to my clients all the time, is that first of all, it must be purpose-driven, like not just um, 
lucrative driven how does it say money not just money thank you not just money driven okay we have to know why you are doing what you're doing and that money can is important i'm not saying that's not important but it's like secondary and your purpose and why you do what you do is more important than money. Then you know when you're doing so marketing, when you have the collaboration thing going on, like what you do elevates what everybody else in your field is doing. You don't work with, you don't see people like they are competition. You see them like, well, if I talk good, if I'm a good coach, well, people will find that coaches are good and everyone that starts to be a coach will be found like a good coach because I am a good coach. Makes sense? Please, thumbs, please here, help me. Okay. Okay, another thing we, we have to think about is like delivering a positive message, not going always in their, in their pain or making them scared because if they don't buy and everything, it's like you have to know that this is not the only way. I'm, I'm highlighting this because here in Brazil, it's like the only way. It's like you have workshops just to find the pain points of people. And this is like, a, for me, I wanna, I wanna cry when I see that. Um, narrow media is very important because you, you are in the places you really need to be and that you know that your clients, your, your potential clients are, so it's not a strategy where you are everywhere in the media, like you have the YouTube, the Facebook, Instagram, the LinkedIn, the TikTok, the whatever, what else is coming, Clubhouse and everything. Here, we hear a lot that we have to be everywhere so our message goes broader. So, I mean, this is not where slow marketing is. You have to be where you really need to be. Uh, simplicity, like everything we do, it's the most simple way possible. We have a, a tendency of complex, complexion, complicating things. We are like that, human beings. We are like, wow, if I do this and I have this automation and I put this over there and have this sales page and everything. So we when we do that, we just stop doing it because it's so goddamn complex and we don't do, don't do it anymore. It's like, oh my God, I don't remember what I did to get here. So it's impossible. It's respectful to you. Like, what do I really like to be doing here to, to promote my business? I don't want to be someone that hates being on a video and I'm having a, a marketing consultant telling him, no, you have to do lives. One, one, once a week, because this is the trending now. This is what's trending now. So you have to do that. So it's kind of that. And uh, respecting other people, like don't be invasive and don't make people decide without knowing why they're buying from you. This is what respectful is. Honest, like selling what you really know that you are going to deliver. Yeah, and that's, I call it the honest part. For me, it exemplifies so beautifully when I see bonuses. You know the bonuses thing that people sell. They like, well, you have this course, but you already, but you also have like five bonuses from, from this course. And then, like, the first thought that comes to me is like, this your course is so bad that you need ten bonuses to to like make it better and it's not honest i mean if you're selling this sell this tell me exactly what you are going to give to me and this is very clear to me and the intelligent part is beautifully uh said also when when uh when ted says it that he says this a lot says this a lot that people have the ability to decide on their own if they want to buy from you your your role is just let them know what you are uh, offering and why and your point of view, your take. So the intelligent, you, you understand that people are intelligent enough to decide. So this, these are the concepts that guide me when I'm thinking about slow marketing. And, and when I do the marketing in my own business and when I 
um, tell people about it. So these are the concepts. And I have here, uh, for, for me, what it is for me, uh, on the end of it, it's like zone marketing is an approach. It's a new lens that we put on. It's a daily exercise of being honest with myself and having the courage to choose and decide what works for me and my marketing today, considering my rhythm and vision for the future. It's alive. That's what I want to bring it to you. This, all that you're doing, your business, your marketing, your life, everything is connected and it's all alive all the time. It changes, it evolves. So it's not like I'm sitting down and I'm writing my strategy, my marketing strategy, and that's it. It's much more than that. So um, this is, well, slow marketing. I, I want to know if someone has something on the oh, profit. Okay, people are helping me with the words. Thank you. I'm just saying the chat right now. So, well, everything fine to hear, guys. Is, is, is my accent hard to understand? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, okay. Um, it means in the end, so this is like, you, I, will tell, I will send you this presentation, okay? You don't have to worry about writing it down. I'll send you all after we end up, we wrap it up. So for you should know that slow marketing means knowing why we're doing the things we're doing in the first place. Why am I doing this? Is it really necessary? Is it okay? Is it, is it aligned with my life right now? Uh, it's about leveraging our stronger skills, not just looking at the trend things. Trend things are... I'm sorry to say that, but I will have to say it's for young people and young people is not worried about a lot of things that we are worried right now, like um, family and house and then paying the bills and um, leave the trend things for the young people to do it if you really love it, but don't do it if you don't like it. So, okay, I'm not on TikTok and I'm look at it and I see my daughter and she was like, Ooh dancing all around and I'm like, oh my God. And we have it that here. So I'll leave it to her this part. Well, it means also determine our role. Where does it start and where does it end? What role does your um, business place in the market? This is a lot of Ted's work here, like pff, very strong. He talks about that a lot. And improving what's working and ditching what's not. Sometimes we keep on trying things that we don't like it, but someone said we should do it and then we are doing it, but it's not working. It's okay. Let that go. Just do things that you love doing it. If you don't like doing anything, I mean, go to hub marketing. Forget about <laughs> the online work. But it, it means that place where you make like peace with the marketing thing and it's okay to be doing some things and it's okay not doing another thing okay so this is most of it next well why does it matter <laughs> it matters well it matters because we're tired i know i am i am tired too um we are tired of relying just on social media like what happened I always, I always ask my clients, how, how did people sell before social media? There were, there were businesses before social media. They had, they lived from this, this work. So the social media is like here in Brazil, it's like everything else doesn't matter. I mean, it's like all you have, all you have to do is be on social media all the time, like Instagram and Facebook and they just forget about everything else. I know it's very comfortable to be uh, on social media because you sit right here and you write two or three posts and you poof, 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 and you send everything uh, on schedule and my work is done. And then nothing happens and people are like, oh my God, this is terrible. I hate social media. Why is it not working? My, I'm going to be broke and everything. So we are really tired. We feel very disconnected and obsolete 
I feel that all the time because the technologies evolve very quickly and I feel like I'm always behind and I don't know what to do next, what's going to happen next. I try to, but it's very hard. Uh, we are tired of doing too much effort and not getting enough rewards. And we see that we are, if you, if you read and learn about uh, the, um, um, oh, I forgot the words. I'll come back to that later. Um, we don't have the, I really do go back to here later. Okay. And we are tired of marketing, dictating everything we do. Like, oh, I'm here and then I'm, I'm relaxing in my pool and I have to take a picture to show on Instagram. It's, it's like, we are so wired this way. Like, um, well, how does this thing that is happening to my life, to me right now, can be incorporated in a stories uh, so I can show people that what I do. I mean, this is tiring. Uh, being all the time thinking about that and it's very tiring and trying a lot of things that it doesn't work and we then put ourselves into this FOMO and anxiety thing like why is it not working what else can I do and then we start to go way beyond what we really want to be doing like and by that I mean we started to do the little dances on reels and this gives me like, ah, I will not do it. I mean, if this is what it takes, I won't do it. I will do something else. So we're tired and we need to find new ways to get the results we want. So this is what for me is the most amazing thing about the time we are alive right now. I mean, there are millions of ways of doing things. And we have the, the technology and the access to it. And it's like, oh my God, why are we doing everybody doing the same thing? If we have all the tools to do whatever we want and find new ways of doing the same thing. I mean, like entrepreneurship for me is that. It's how do I do this thing differently with outside from what everybody else is doing? It's the, a way of thinking. So what ways that really works for us? This is very important. So as marketing is very focused on you, on what you know, on what your experience brings you, on what you want to be doing, on what your business needs, not like um, a, a cut and craft solution. How does it say cut and what? The solution that's for everybody. You have this say in English, I, I forgot. You can tell me later. Cut and paste. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. So um, we have to find ways to be aligned with your our value, life values. So, like for me, for instance, um, my my main value, my main life value is my family. Because I have kids and they're small and everything, I want to be part of their their growth and everything. So I have to have a business that is aligned with that. If I, if I get to have a business that doesn't get me to be with my kids, then I, I better go back to corporate. So it pays me better and I won't be there. And it's okay. It's changing for the same thing. So this is like a lot of um, thinking about our values. It has... Well, find ways to be sustainable in the long term, ways that doesn't lead us to burnout. We, we are facing a lot of burnout things on the world lately. It's already a, a thing that is, um, well, you know, burnout. Everybody knows that. And um, ways that use our abilities and allow us to be consistent. So this is like... Um, we need to start doing that. And that's where I wanted to get is how do we do that? Well, first, um, for me, and I think for Ted too, he will surely give me the thumbs up that marketing is the outcome of a well-built business. When you have a very well-built business, the marketing comes 
by himself. It's like, let's just talk about that. It's not like, oh my God, what should I be telling people here to, the, to convince them? And it goes away from convincing. It's like, this is what it is. Do you like it or not? It's so clear and so specific that people just look at it and like, oh my God, this is it. But it takes time to do that. Okay, it's not like um, it takes time. You see, Ted has been sharing all his work and content and everything. It's like thousands and thousands of words and posts and everything. And every time I read one, I'm like, oh my God, I just learned something new. <laughs> Writing it down, what he says and everything. But uh, slow marketing can get results when you start organizing your business to be strong and simple. It's hard to have a simple business, but the simple businesses are the businesses that makes more money in the end because you don't have all the uh, things in the middle. So the question is, what would you need to change about your business to make it simpler and stronger today? And that question is also, you have to not look at your business, but at your life. I mean, what's happening right now? I was just telling Ted that we are moving and then I'm working on some things in the another house I bought. And uh, it doesn't, it's not giving me the enough space to be fully at work. I mean, what's happening in your life right now that uh, will impact your marketing, that will impact your business? You have to put that on the equation. Okay, so this is more like this low way of living mixed with this low marketing, mixed with low business and everything is interconnected. So how do these changes impact your marketing and your business, all right? So I have to bring you here, the, the two perspectives that I work with. First of all, from Ted is like the platform container and the pets. I mean, this is what I work really, really closely with my clients. And um, it's like knowing enough about yourself to make better marketing decisions, strategic and tactical decisions. I mean, we have a, a life beyond our, our business and you have to put that into account too. So the platform you have all the information here the membership it's what you're known for what do you want to be known for people a lot of people doesn't know that answer and it takes a lot of time and effort to 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 like hone this and bring it out and feel um confident about talking about it and like letting people know what it really is without being ashamed of naming it, like owning the space you want to be in. And this is the platform. And the container is like the, um, the, the structure you are using. Um, and of course, making your business safe and sustainable. Uh, for in the long term, it takes time and a lot of effort too. And the pets that that really for me is the marketing is right here. Just that it's here. I mean, these two other areas form the third area for me. Like when you have the platform and the container that's in a good size and that has no holes in it and that everything's working fine. Like the mark, the paths to it are much easier to, to design and to know, well, I'm doing this on Instagram because I know that I have all everything settled in my website to receive the people that are coming from Instagram and not the other way around. Here in Brazil, it's very common the other way around. Uh, the person has nothing. She doesn't know where, what she's going to offer. And she's on Instagram making dances. Ooh. And I'm like, why are you selling? They should not know. And it's, it's just crazy. This is one, what, what, from, this is from the marketing perspective. And I wanted to bring a little bit about the um, business perspective. This is what I got from Tara McMullen, someone I, I in, to, told you about Ted on the way, the, the day you asked about the person that we follow to. This is from Tara that we zoom out and we look at the business sustainability um, from these three areas, the operational, personal, and financial. And um, the operational is regarding our capacity 
Like we are always over capacity. Let's just respect our capacity right now. This is what I've been doing. Well, this is slow to like respecting what is possible. And I know that we want a lot of things, but what is possible right now? So uh, the systems we have, uh, the things that we automate or not, um, this is important. And sometimes we leave this out. So it's important to look at it. The financial sustainability to support your operations, the evolving of your operations and your financial needs and all the people that are working with you if you have a business that has a lot of people. And uh, a personal and social sustainability about our boundaries with our clients, with the market and uh, personal, our personal growth too. Do I love doing that? Does it make happy? Does, does this make me happy and everything? This is like um, the vision I have when I see the businesses of people. I'm like, I'm always, when people come to me to talk about their business, I'm like, what is it really lacking here? And it's always something here. It's all the operation side, side of the thing that she just ignores uh, or the, the boundaries. She wants to say no. And then she says yes, because she needs the money. And then she has this client she hates because she had to say yes to a price that she didn't want to, to be paid for and, and everything like that. And this is all, very important and the the question that led me um to a higher place in my business was this one um not a question but a thought like how to reposition ourselves from the role where we are just doing the work to the role of also owning the business um not just the person delivering it i know i mean i love to be the person that coaches people but I also have to look into the role of being the owner of my business that has, has to have this operational sustainability, this personal and social sustainability and financial sustainability in the long term with the slow things. So this is kind of the presentation and I want to share two stories. I don't know if I have time. We have a little time, okay. I, I'm going to share with you two stories that I was sharing that from people that work with me here in Brazil. And that one of them, which is Marina, she, uh, she was living in the United States at the time and she was working in Brazil. And then she decided to move her, uh, her business all to the United States. Just so you know, I asked them two simple questions. I was like, oh, tell me uh, what changed in terms after the, our, our work together, what changed in terms of numbers and what changed in terms of quality of life for you, okay? So both of them, um, how do I say, they answered in different ways, but I'm going to share with you. So Marina is, is a very introvert and low profile um, way of, the way she is like that. And she had, it's important that you know, that when she came to me, she already had a um, very mature mindset and a very mature business. She was already working a lot, of studying a lot. She was like, she had clients and everything. And she hit like a, a, a ceiling. A plateau. Okay. A plateau. And she was like, I, am, I did the traditional marketing stuff. I hated it. I need something else. I want to know what what is your work. And so we we went we did a, a coaching one on one, and she um, um, told me about her the changes she had. So she is we we worked together in uh, November twenty twenty. And uh, in 2021, in the beginning, she was charging $180 per person per session and ended the same year charging $350 because of all the clarity she had explaining to people what she did. She's an embodiment coach, somatic trauma healer. She's very, very specific in the work she does. 
it's it's it has to do with sexuality and women and trauma and sexual trauma it's very specific so she really needed also to be very um smooth the the, the communication like she didn't she couldn't be have aggressive marketing because of the 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 topic she was talking about so um and in in, two, in 2021, she started with just one client and ended the year with eight. And in 2022, she stopped receiving new clients and opened a waiting list. So uh, now she's working with 12 clients and has a waiting list of seven people. So I think she's fine. She also launched a group service. She, this is the 101. Then she launched the group service and she had a, a beta test um, so a coaching program and with four students, then she reviewed her launch strategy and the, the format and everything with a launch specialist. But I want to highlight one important thing. When you have this low marketing approach in your mind and in your, in your lenses, you know what to ask a launch specialist. You're like, I don't want that. I want that. I mean, you don't get uh, enrolled in the way he does marketing. You are able to know when he's going to the traditional aggressive marketing and you say, no, that's not going to be on my sales page. This is what I need on my sales page. So this is very important to highlight. And she relaunched it yeah, right now in January and she already has 22 students in the group and she's very happy. She shared here a little bit of her revenue. And when it comes to uh, her um, relationship with the, her marketing and her business, she says she's more at peace with her choices within her business. And uh, her sales page is clear, complete and connecting with the right people. She's turning away clients because she's very clear about the service and who is it for and who it's not for. So people that come there are not ready to work with her. She's very clear about that. It's not you. You cannot work with me right now. And she has this ability to do that. She's no longer a slave to social media or email marketing. She does it like more on her own rhythm and the way she is. She's very, very introverted and soft and and she talks like very slow, very slow, and she's like that. And she loved hub marketing. Um, she was like, oh my God, this really works. And she's connected with a lot of big players. And she's less anxious and no longer worrying about the future of her business. These are her words about applying slow marketing to her business. And I also have Natalia. Natalia here works in Brazil. She's different from Marina. She's more like more extrovert. She's tech savvy. She likes to do things on the internet. She's younger. And uh, she also is a coach, a positive and wellness coach. And we worked together in 2019. And before Slow Marketing, she didn't have a structure. She was like, all oh, the marketing. I do all you do. I do marketing from for about for what? I don't know. But I do marketing. She did everything. She had the email marketing, she had the Instagram, Facebook, she had ads, she had everything, but selling nothing, mainly. She had a website and she did a traditional marketing consultancy. So that made her launch a service she didn't have, like a seed launch. I don't know how to say that in English. It's, it's in translation from Brazil, it's like seed launch. You launch something that doesn't exist. And when people buy, you, you start to do it. <laughs> I mean, this is so insane for me, but it happens a lot here. Um, she then, after we worked together, she reviewed all the structure, the message, the niche, and, and she started to put that on her website and the, in social networks. She started saving a lot of time from social media, uh, redesigned everything, removed all the triggers and structured services. Uh, she like organized everything to receive people better and she started to get results. And then uh, she started to 
invest in, in content, in content marketing. And then she started to get invitations to talk about her work. Uh, she launched paid workbooks and started to uh, have a podcast. She changed a little bit, but she had a very well built message and she started to get results from that. So this is um, my share of these two stories. You get this presentation. So I want you all to remember uh, that you and your business are in a relationship. And if you take care of it, it will take care of you. So um, in all the ways that you know that are important to you. So you have to look at that as a place of relationships. So thank you. You can find me in my website. I have already put uh, the, the translated uh, page for you so you can understand my work and a little bit of what I do. And I, I opened recently because of our meet here today, um, uh, Instagram in English. So I'll be posting a little bit, a little things right there for you to, I mean, follow and okay. Okay, I will stop sharing now. And if you would like to ask uh, any questions, I am here. Well, um, I would love it if we could, could we go back to those two stories? And I would love to hear sort of what was your take? What did you see was the most important shift? Um, you know, if there's a detail from each of them, you might share anything you remember from working with them in terms of maybe mm -hmm. their niche, their point of view, the hubs, uh, anything that comes to you. Yeah, well, for Marina, the main thing with her was understanding that um, she said that to me a lot of times that um, she needed to narrow down the, the places she was talking about her work. Uh -huh. She needed to, like, uh, she decided to stop selling things in Brazil because she had things in, in, in English, in, in Portuguese, she was like struggling with what do I do? I want to serve Brazil, but I'm also here and things are happening here. And when she decided to um, mm. stop one, to, to sell it in one country and to do in the other, it's like she just low, like diminished a lot the yes. places she had to be in. For her, it was like a huge jump because then she was like, um, was clear to her the, the people she needed to reach out for, you know, her marketing thing and what she needed to be selling people. And for her, it was that. And also understanding the moment she had to be in those people's lives. Uh -huh. That was very important to her too. Like uh, understanding that before that certain point, she didn't have to talk about that. Um, she needed to talk about what really was the moment she had to be in their lives that was for her. And right, there was a moment it was too, too soon for her to show up and there's a moment it's maybe too late, but it sounds like she, um, what was that moment that she determined? What was, do you recall, what was the sweet spot for her to, to appear in the life of her clients? She, um, because she was doing the, what we do here, uh, uh, like the funnel content thing, like when people are not aware, I have to talk about this. And when people mm -hmm. is a little bit aware, we have to talk about this. And I'm like, no, you have to um, understand that the people will already be searching for you because they already have a trauma and they are they need your help right now they are not going to be like oh do i have a trauma i don't have a trauma maybe i have a trauma mm. it, it's they already know then we found that uh, we got into the realization talking that people to buy what she was selling it was very specific they had really bad traumas uh, always related to sexual things Mm -hmm. That she couldn't be talking about it like, oh, ha, 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 like it's, it's, it was very specific. So she needed to have an email list. She needed to have something more private, more specific 
to talk about that is in a safe place for those people because they wouldn't share their stories if, if it was like, let's make a live about the trauma. Yeah. No. So for her, it was like understanding that, like, okay, I don't need to be doing that anymore. I need to put my effort in something more, I mean, inside job. You know what I mean? Like hub marketing for her was very important. No because doubt. it's word of mouth. So people started to talk about her. Like she she helped me with that. So for her, it's like letting go a lot of things that had no reason to be there because of mm. her work. I feel like that goes back to what you were saying earlier about knowing why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And, yeah. and about um, Natalia, for her it was like, um, for her it was a more like mindset thing, mm. understanding that she was in this pin marketing thing because people told her to do it. And um, she, she's, um, she's calmer. She needed to be calm. For her, it's like that. It's like this place of calmness, like, okay, I, I got to do this and then that, and it's okay. It's more like the understanding of that. Do you, do you find with a lot of your clients that, that a lot of your work is helping them let go of certain things, like that they're doing too much, they've taken too much on, or they're, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this is mainly the things they tell me is like um, the the relief of the permission of not doing it. Because yeah. we are being bombarded every day for, of things that we should be doing and we should be and you must be and the trending things that are happening right now. So this is very, very strong here in Brazil. And um, it, it gets, it, it gets like people get really burned out. Really. It's, I had a client that told me I sold it. I did the, the formula thing. I sold like 20 spots I, that I wanted to sell. I didn't have the energy to deliver it afterwards. Like it's like I sold and, and we start next week. Well, next week, I don't have the power or the energy to deliver what I have to deliver. This is what I sold. I mean, they put all the effort on selling and they forget what comes next. This is very, very common here in Brazil. Mm. Like, and they all become marketing experts. So you have marketing experts that are, are, are nutritionists and we have marketing experts that are were dentists and we have yes. marketing experts that were a lot of things and they gave up and started to, to sell people how to do marketing. Yeah, that you understood. Oh man, I've seen that so many times. Yeah, people start off right as a nutritionist and now they're a business coach because they couldn't figure out a way to make money. Not because money can't be made in those domains, but... I, it was, I was just resonating with what you were saying off the top of when I first started, it wasn't just that it felt terrible what I was doing. It didn't work. It was so shitty if it still worked. I mean, I wish I could say I was so noble that I would have stopped, but I probably wouldn't have, but it didn't work either. So, you know, there's that. And something Anna Paula said that I think is worth underlining just for everyone as a kind of take home exercise is to ask yourself, you know, when you look at your ideal clients, what is it that they're needing permission to stop doing or to do? Yeah. They're often needing some permission and that might be to stop using social media. It might be to start using social media. There's a lot of things they just, I don't know. It's the society we grow up in very, you know, top down authoritarian and um, you know, there's all of that. And so I think, people get into their head that there are these rules and well, I have to follow the rules. So I can't do that or I have to do that. And when somebody would just say, you don't have to do that. I mean, I'm sure, um, Anna, you've seen this so many times, but I've had it with clients where I just like, you don't have to do that. And they yeah. really? <laughs> uh, yeah. um, and they feel and miserable doing it. 
And this is what I try to show them. You don't have to be miserable doing it. I mean, marketing is just a part, a little part of your business. It doesn't have to take all your energy and all your efforts to that little part. I mean, it's a very important part right now in yeah. 2022, where we have all the social media and the internet and everything. We have to also be... Um, uh, well, good enough to understand that we have this power right now that we didn't have, I mean, yeah. many, many years ago. But it doesn't have to be like all everything there, like all right. my money, all my chips in that basket. Yeah. yeah you know, that that uh, is also what I tell them all the time. Yeah. And could we go back also to the Venn diagrams in your presentation? Yeah. yeah. How do I do that? I will I will present again. Yeah, let's do the screen share and we'll go back to the, um, not my Venn diagrams, but the, the second ones. Okay. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll just go back a yeah. little bit. Here, this one. Yeah. It just struck me that these three all fit within the container or the business model. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was in doubt which one should I put first. Yeah. Your van or her van. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't know. <laughs> so. But yeah, it just strikes me, you know, when, when for everyone, when you're looking at your business model, the, this is a great three lenses to look through. There's the operational side. So that's the kind of engineering side of it, the architecture of it, the structure, the systems, you know, all of that. Man, um, so many businesses could do with this. You know, Rebecca Van Dam is on the call right now. She's, a real whiz at this, creating these systems for social media. So you, you're you not just freestyling it all the time, which is exhausting. And then, yeah, the financial sustainability, oh man. Um, I mean, it's the, the old joke I say, I don't, you know, there's a reason I don't run accounting for hippies, but that's cost me a number of times not paying attention to my finances. Uh, because I just didn't care. I was too busy. I just, you know, and it, that's really dinged me uh, in taxes, being late, or um, just realizing I'm spending too much on various things. So that's a big piece of it. And then, yeah, the personal social sustainability, your boundaries. So many businesses get crushed. Everything's great. The niche is great. The rest of the business model is great. The, the, they got the hubs and everything, and they can't say no. And so the sessions keep running over time. They keep saying yes to clients that aren't actually a fit. They keep doing things they don't want to do because they feel like they have to. So, um, you know, if you want your business to be, uh, you know, there's those four S's of business model. It's safe, it's sustainable, it's simple, it's satisfying. And this is a real good uh, lens to look at that with, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Yeah, and the system is not. I'll send it to you. I'll send it to you. Please, yeah. Um, so Tazim said the systems operation part really speaks to me. Uh, why am I posting on social media when I know my systems are where I'd like them to be? Yeah. It doesn't mean one can't do both. One could post on social media and also in other places. But yeah, just having a system, having checklists for things, having, um, uh, you know, the. Um, the manual where here's how this is done. This also, you know, as mm -hmm. Anna was talking about the shifting from just working here's yeah, reposition yourself from the role where you're doing the work to the role of owning the business. There's, it's almost like there's a few stages entrepreneurs go through. The first is you have to make a decision of, is this a business or is it a hobby? Like how seriously uh, are you taking this? And that's a big jump to just say, okay, I'm, I'm not just going to massage my friends and you know, I'm going to really take a leap, do this properly. But then there's another step or, or a few, but you know, where you start to say, okay, now it's a business, but now am I going to be the only employee in this business? Or will I build instead of just the, the you know, you swim from one Island to another, dragging someone behind you, will you build a boat that you can be on that will carry you and multiple other people? And there's no right or wrong answer to that or how big that boat needs to be. That's mm -hmm. a very personal thing, but that's, that is another stage to get through. Once you've 
set it up as a business and you're doing the work, there, there is another level that's possible where, you know, I remember Marianne Williamson, she said something like about something about there's certain great people and their greatness wasn't that they did a lot, but that was, or that they did great things, but that around them, great things seem to happen. And so there is a potential for, especially with the technology we have now, there's such potential for, for leverage. Uh, not that it doesn't come without immense cost to the world that we do this, but um, you know, the internet is not a, a neutral event on the planet, but we do have this technology to allow us to do group programs, you know, online courses, um, various automated things, uh, you know, instead of a million emails back and forth, trying to figure out a date, scheduling apps, that kind of thing. And those can help us to expand the impact that we have, which will also make our business just way more sustainable for us uh, in the long term. So are there any questions that anyone has for Anna? Feel free to just unmute yourself if you'd like. Yeah. I mean, I'm just so grateful. What you're doing is so beautiful. Um, it's 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 wonderful to see, and it's I I know the exact feeling. I mean, I remember how it felt when I had the wake up moment, came across Ari Galper's work, and something. It was like, oh my God, it doesn't have to be this way. So um, I'm thrilled that others are having that experience and that you're giving people permission to actually slow down. Um, yeah, it's wonderful. And I'm so glad you have an English um, uh, Instagram now, which I'm following. <laughs> yeah, posted yeah, yeah. a bunch of this presentation in my stories. So, uh, and the, la the last thing I'll leave everyone with is, um, so, you know, my puttering sessions are booked until May they'll probably fill up pretty quickly. It just seems to fill faster and faster these days. Um, but you've got other marketing people like Anna here. So please feel free to reach out, you know, to, to avail yourselves of, of the work of other people here. Uh, Cause I can only help so many people. And uh, you know, I, I just would, well, you've seen Anna, you know, so now you have a sense of her. You know she's, me already. Yeah. So she's, she's a, um, She's a wonderful um, addition to this membership and a support for anyone here. So please feel free to reach out to her. And if people want to reach you, where do they find you? They can find me on, um, I'll put here my, my sure. website. And uh, well, you can follow me on Instagram and DM me directly from there also, it's easier. Yeah, um, and uh, really, if you'd like to get to know a little bit more about my work, you can go there. It's already all in English, and I am here. If you can't have a puttering session with Ted, you can have a puttering session with me. I won't oh, be puttering, good. but I will be here <laughs> with you to talk about it, and it's okay. Okay, I, I really want to thank you. My Instagram is at islo marketing okay so yes. we've got um anna fragoso so a-n-a-f-r-a-g-o-s-o.com or at slow underscore marketing uh so you can follow her in both places i know i will be and uh, thank you all for coming we'll see you soon thank you bye bye everyone thank you